At this point in our integration, we need to create a map and also update the Salesforce query operation with contact information. I'll demonstrate six different activities found on pages 21 through 27 of the activity guide. So class activity one is gonna be creating a Salesforce database insert map. Exercise 10, map the source and destination fields. Exercise 11, set default mapping values. And then we're gonna do class activity two, populating the create date field. Additional challenge one, updating the Salesforce query operation with contact information, and additional challenge two, map the contact information. Although we constructed both the inbound Salesforce and outbound database document structures, we must bridge the gap by adding a map component to connect the proper fields. So for this activity, we're gonna create a Salesforce database map, keeping in mind that we're only loading the profiles into the map and we're not yet mapping the fields for class activity one. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to, under our execute shapes, we're going to drag and drop a map shape onto the process canvas. We are going to create a new mapping component, and we're going to be naming this component Salesforce Account to Database Insert. So we'll be naming this Salesforce Account to Database Insert. And now we're going to load both the source and destination profiles into the map. So if we click the Choose button on the map source, and this is going to be an XML profile. Under Developer 1 Prospect Tracking, we have our Salesforce account query response. So you can see it gave us account C with all of our fields. Next, we're going to do our destination. So if you choose the Choose button on the Map Destination, we're going to check our database profile, which is our customer insert. And we can expand those fields. That completes class activity one, creating a Salesforce database insert map. Exercise 10, we're going to map the source and destination fields. So with the source and destination profiles loaded into the map, we're gonna link all the corresponding fields. So we're gonna map the fields from account source to the customer columns and destination. In your activity guide, you'll see which fields need to be mapped to which corresponding fields in the destination profile. So for instance, name would be mapped to the bill to name, to the name, and to the ship to name. So I just demonstrated one way that you can map is you just drag from name over to the corresponding field until it, it highlights the destination field and then they'll be connected. That's one way that you can map. Another way is using Boomi Suggest, where it'll give you a high confidence matches. Either way you map, make sure that the mappings are complete and accurate to how they appear in your activity guide. Once you've completed your mappings, that'll complete exercise 10. So again, you can complete mappings by either dragging from left to the corresponding right or using Boomi Suggest. Your activity guide will guide you through both options. Now that we're finished with exercise 10, we're gonna go into exercise 11. So this is gonna be setting default mapping values. So sometimes the source profile doesn't contain all the required information, so hard-coded values need to be applied to some destination fields. We're gonna be setting four default values to our destination profile. The first one is going to be to our company underscore key. So if we click on the down arrow next to it and we click set a default value, we're going to enter 59 for company key and then hit OK. So now you can see the default value is in parentheses next to company key. Now we're gonna follow those same steps for department to make it IT, status, which we're gonna have set as a default value to zero, and then the user underscore ID, which is gonna be your name. So best practice for you here when entering user underscore ID would be putting your full first name and then your last initial. So if your name was John Smith, you would do John capital S. So an example of that would be in our case, I'm going to put Boomi trainer. So now we can save the process and that's going to finish exercise 11. So, so far we've done class activity one, exercise 10, and exercise 11. Next, we're going to do class activity two, which is populating the create date field. So for class activity two, populating the create date field. So if you see, we have functions, which is the middle of the map here. So we're gonna add a function to the map. 
So the database requires the create date field be populated with the current system date and time. So a map function is going to be used to supply this data for each account record. So if we click add a function to the map, and then under category, we're going to select date, and then it's going to be get current date. And then you see we have this new function here. So we can take the result of that get current date function, and we'll map it to the create date in the destination profile. And that finishes class activity two, populating the create date field. Next, we're going to do additional challenge one, which is updating the Salesforce query operation with contact information. So in mapping the account fields to the customer columns, we realize that the main account contact's name and email address can't be sourced from the base account object. So contact name refers to the main contact of the account record, which could be a sales rep, an account manager, etc. There are two options to handle this. So we can add a connector call map function to the map to query the Salesforce contact object on the fly, or we could update the original account query operation to include the parent contact fields. The second option is going to be better for us because it exposes all required fields up front and prevents an extra API request for each account record, which is required from the connector call. For all connector types, it's best to append any additional objects to the profile by using the import feature again. So we're going to save and close our map function right now. We're going to hit OK, and we're going to go back to our Salesforce query up. So from the process canvas, we clicked our account query by type. We opened our operation component. And now we're going to want to go back in and import again. So the connection is going to be our Salesforce connection, Boomi Training Salesforce. And we're going to click Next. Again, we're going to do account underscore C. The action is going to be query. And we're going to hit Next. It's building our object tree. This time, as our object tree is built, we're going to expand our child objects section. And we're going to select contacts R. So if we go down, you can see contacts underscore R. We're going to select Next. We can review the results and we can finish here. So again, it's a account underscore C query. The response profile is our Salesforce underscore account query response profile. And now what you can see is under the objects here, if we expand on child objects, you have the contacts underscore R. So what we can do is we can save and close, return to our process, and that's going to be additional challenge one. So we just updated our Salesforce query operation with contact information. So now additional challenge two, we're going to map that contact information. So we can open our map back up. And now what we're going to see if we scroll down, we have this new child elements of contact. So we can expand on that. And in our case, we're going to scroll to the bottom. We see our contact underscore C, and we're going to map the contact name or the name under contacts to our field in the profile of contact name. So you see we have contact name and contact email. So under our contact underscore C profile, we're going to map to our contact name and our contact profile. So now that we've mapped our name to our contact name and our email to our contact email, we're going to save our process. So that's going to complete additional challenge number two, which is mapping the contact information. Now it's your turn to complete all the activities found on pages 21 through 27 of the activity guide. So again, there's going to be six different activities found on pages 21 to 27, and now is your time to complete.